Hey guys, Tasha here from Stardust Gold Crochet. So I'm going to do a little walkthrough on working this border and also on how to create the tassels for the Corona coverall. All right, I hope you guys enjoy it. Hey guys, Tasha here from Stardust Gold Crochet. You might hear thunder. It is really a bad thunderstorm right now. So for I, I wanted to say thank you guys first for stopping by and checking out my Corona coverall pattern. Um, I just wanted to give you a few um, tips and tricks on how to work this pattern. So after you're finished completing it, I know um, on one part, we're first I'm going to go over the border. So for the border, um, you're going to start in the corner with the garment facing up towards you just like you see in the um, diagram that's above. So here you're going to put, this is already completed, the border. Here's the foundation single crochet row. I'm going to get a little closer. There's the foundation. So you're going to start right here basically in the, in the edge of the foundation single crochet row. And then you're going to work your half double crochets all the way up and you're going to work it around. When you get to the slit, which is the corner right here, now I'll zoom out a little bit. This is um, the leg slit. So what I was talking about when I said skip over one, because it's a little difficult to kind of skip over, these aren't really stitches, right? So um, what I did, as you can see, I just kind of like, oops, and I think my little tail is kind of fraying out a little bit. There we go. Um, so what I did, as you can see, there's kind of a little hole here. All I did was I worked my half doubles all the way up, and then instead of working into these the little corner pieces there, I skipped over so that it would create more of a corner as opposed to rounding it out so that it would drape a little bit better. And uh, this is actually the inside of my garment that we're looking at, because you can see where I sewed it. So when you're sewing it up, I would recommend going through both sides and do a running stitch, because you want it to be able to stretch just a little bit. Um, if you did a whip stitch, it would create even a thicker edge, and also it would make it um, not as flexible, and that you want this to drape, because it's very stretchy. So let's get back to the border. Um, when you're doing the border, I wanted to show you a good sample here. Okay. So I started in that corner and was working my way around. What I did was I noticed, and it might be different for you depending on what sides you sew together, but um, so I did, here's my corner stitch. The corner stitch has a half double with a chain and a half double. And then you kind of, I kind of just guesstimated as to where to place these. I made them really loose so they would stretch. And it seemed like I had about four stitches per, per uh, double treble, which was on the edges. And then I put one in the edge there and another one in this one or two in this space depending but I tried to keep them loose because I didn't want to get gaps too many gaps but you can see when it's finished it doesn't look bad um, just do the best you can and you could see here um, this is the right side I think yes um, so here on this on this little I called them triangles or half triangles I think I've got one, two, three, and four. So you can stretch them out like that. That's why I was saying work them very loose so that you can stretch them out over the distance. And see there I have one in that little hole there, and then I have one in that little hole there, and then I have one, two, three, four. So get a gauge, because everybody's might be different um, depending on your gauge. Get a gauge for how many you're going to have in each, and then just keep it consistent throughout when you're working this border. Hey guys, okay, so this is how I created the 
tassels. And I put a link on there. I, I just used my water bottle and I went about right up to here, not to the thickest part because that would have been too big. So I put it like right about there and then I wound it around about 20 times. Oops, it might slip off so you can hold it with your fingers. Two, three, four, five. Ooh, okay, that's not working. <laughs> Weehaw! Okay, let's try this again. Okay, so I did this about 20 times and my thing, I guess I wasn't as slippery before. Yowzers, okay, let's do it this way. Three, make sure you hold them back. Four, five, and 20. Okay, so there I had my 20. So what you do is just grab a hold. You can tie around right there if you want or just slide the whole thing off and it leaves you this open space. So what you do is you grab your another piece of yarn and I don't really want to cut this because um, I don't like wasting yarn. So I'm going to use a scrap piece from another one that I was working on. Oh, here we go. Here's a scrap piece. Okay, so I would cut about, I guess, six to eight inches and then just go ahead and insert it through there, through the hole and then pull it up. It's a little wavy because I was uh, had a pattern going and then tighten it up and you want you want these to be long so that when they hang down you can cut when you cut this part that they'll kind of blend in and be a part of it. So I usually do a double knot here or um, a fisherman's knot. A fisherman's knot is pulling it through once, pulling it through again and then it creates this kind of, and then just pull it tight. And supposedly fishermen's knots do not come out. So, so once you get to this point, you're gonna go ahead and cut the other side, just like this. And I'm not gonna do it because I don't wanna waste my yarn, like I said. So you cut, cut all that, and then you bunch it up, and then you tie another piece of yarn around this way and again make it long enough so that when you cut it it kind of blends in or you can just sew in the ends either way and I recommend doing a fisherman's knot for this one too I know this looks really funny right now because it's like pink and white okay so there is partially bit of the tassels but of course you can maneuver those around and also what I did for the garment was I twisted I twisted around a few times like that so it had a little bit more of a finished look and then I tied it brought the string down this way and then just cut it and when I attached it to grab this tassel the finished tassel when I attached it to here um, there's another little tail I wet this there we go um, when I attached it to here, I used and um, I tied it with a needle and a, with a, a darning needle, and then you can see I went around a few times with that, and then I just let the tail piece slide out. And then after I had them all the way I, the length that I wanted, I kind of set them down and went and cut them, so it just looked a little more finished. And this is really tight, and so your tail. Is, or your uh, belt is actually a foundation single crochet the whole thing and honestly you guys I made mine too long I mean it's really long it looks cute and everything but I recommend making it a little bit shorter thanks guys for watching and if you want to learn how to do the Solomon's knot the link is in the blog there's a full video tutorial for the Solomon's knot head on over and check it out Please subscribe and hit the little bell button. Take care.